Hello, I am Edo Sadikovic. I am 28 and I'm going to tell you a short story of about my life. Tell me when you'll be my beautiful Clementine. I want to take you drinking wine, beautiful Clementine. You're not afraid of rain. You're not afraid of rain. Uh, I'm Gustavo and I'm 27 years old. I was born in Lisbon, in Portugal, and um, I work as an architect. Um, I'm also a trainer on non-formal education and I'm an LGBTI activist. Okay, I am Gonzalo, um, I'm 28 years old, I studied economy and uh, right now I work, uh, I have various part-times. My name is Mirto Fifa. I work in Talamata in our um, family farm. I'm Nikos, I'm native from here and uh, in Kalamata. And uh, I'm part of a social cooperative enterprise. My name is Eleni and I'm a herbalist. I collect the herbs from the mountain and I make some products that I sell and also some herbs. Um, my name is Rebecca, I am from Ferrol in Spain and my project with my mates Raúl Salgado and Marta Corral is Ferrol 360. Uh, my name is Miguel, I'm from Ferrol, uh, from Spain, and uh, I'm in a music group. Uh, I'm the guitarist of it and I do some second voices as well. We are three, uh, there is a lead singer, uh, it's a girl, and we have a, also a percussionist. I, I studied economics and uh, meanwhile I, I was studying, I, I was trying to travel a lot, so, so basically my my important part of education was non-formal non -formal education and going to various seminars and visiting more than 30 countries. Once, uh, like some years ago, when I finished school, I went in an island that I fell in love with. Really beautiful island in Nicaria. And uh, without knowing what uh, I want to do in my life, I spent two years there. Uh, I grew up in the city and so it was completely different for me, living up to the mountain. So there I, uh, I was first uh, investigating uh, nature and herbs and uh, at that point I decided that I want to be involved with this. I have been raised up in this area, <laughs> in this place, it's my family place. Uh, and uh, after my education and after studies and another life, I choose to come back in this farm uh, because uh, it's a farm that for me needs to get to stay alive as a farm even in the next decades uh, and show to people what is a real farm about. <laughs> I live in the suburbs of, of Lisbon. I, um, I studied in a, in a school with uh, with a lot of problems uh, because it is a, a, stool, a school of poor neighborhoods in in Kasai, which is between Lisbon and Sintra. Um, it's a neighborhood which has uh, well the, the typical problems of a suburban area. It's uh, uh, stigmatized. It has uh, the, the the police is uh, it has an aggressive uh, um, presence. Um, many many of my um, Friends in school came from 
the structured families and all of this. My family itself is not the richest family around, so we had our couple of problems. Between a lot of part-time jobs, um, I develop here in Lisbon uh, a project called Lisbon Sustainable Tourism Project. At the moment, I'm the head of the board of this youth LGBT association, Red Execo. It means inequality in Latin. And we go to schools to talk about gender identity and sexual orientation. And we also have support groups for LGBTI youth in Portugal, in different cities. We started with this project in first months of 2013 because we were unemployed. So we need to work and we wanted to work. We knew each other for other jobs. Also, some of us, we worked together. And we all have the need, we have the necessity of set something. And of course, about our profession, about the journalism. So we create Ferro Electricity, a digital newspaper, because it was the, we can say, the only choice. We started the social, the Prosejos, social cooperative enterprise, mostly because we wanted uh, a reason to stay in Kalamata and be active here. So, it started as a joke that uh, a colleague of ours, Panayota, uh, promoted a lot. Let's do something. Why we don't do so Don't we do something? Uh, we wanted uh, not to be unemployed, and we wanted to stay in Kalamata after some years that we have been around in Greece or in Europe. So we actually decided to do something on our own without any budget. And uh, combining all the interests we had. Uh, I came from a very small town called Priepoli, which is on the border with Montenegro and Bosnia. And um, I tried to be quite active there. We were organizing international events and, and uh, gatherings and youth exchanges within various programs. And uh, so more than probably 200 persons came there in, in two years to... to and. Uh, to do their, their, their projects with us and somehow we were like developing a, a community on international level. Since I know myself, I, I was maybe even obsessed with this idea of um, changing the world uh, or trying to do something to, to do my share and be part of it. My breaking point was when I was 16 when I realized that, okay, the problem is not mine, that I'm gay, it's actually everybody else's. So at that moment I realized, okay, it's okay to be who I am, and actually I just have to change, just have to change everyone, everyone else around me. Everything started, uh, I think, uh, three years ago. Uh, it was in a family gathering, we were having a uh, some birthday of some family member, I don't remember who. And we, uh, me and a cousin of mine, uh, started just playing some songs and covers, just having fun with the guitar. And at some point she told me like, hey, by the way, I have uh, some lyrics that I've uh, written and I maybe you could try to put some music in, in that. I said, okay, so just bring them and I will just sing in a cappella and I will try to, to put something behind. So it just went like really, really fluent. I mean, like everything started like so easily and in 10 minutes we had the, the idea of the song. We have two things really clear at the first, at the very beginning. One, it was that we could not afford an important investment. And second, must be online our project. I, I was trying not to study hard, but to study smart. And I think that, that when I finished my studies, I, I directly went to, the, to Spain. And I went to do uh, European Voluntary Service, which is, which is a long-term program within European Commission. And I went to one Spanish village on the Camino de Santiago called Fromista, where, where I learned to... When I spent uh, eight months living with other international volunteers and doing uh, my voluntary service there. I was working in the city council and working with old people in the morning and later on working in the youth house. I went to a May Day demonstration with these friends. We met a group uh, that was organizing a discussion after the demonstration. And we say, yeah, okay, let's, let's see. Uh, we were curious. Um, 
and we liked this group. Uh, we kept discussing with them, and eventually I, I joined this group, and I'm still mem a member of this collective. Well, the beginning was quite fast, I would say, because in only in one month we had, uh, I think, like seven or eight songs, and we had also worked in some some covers, and. I think it was in November that we talked with some um, some owner of a bar in Santiago and asked him if he would like to, to have us, I mean, have the, the first uh, concert of the neighbor. And we just showed him some, some audio recordings that we had in our mobile phones of our songs. And he really liked it. And he's like, yeah, of course. I mean, I would love to, to be like the first uh, host for, the, for, uh, for, your, for your group. So yeah, it was like in November of last year and and we did it, a lot of people came, I guess a lot of friends that we, we, told, we told to them uh, and, and people seemed to like it. So it was like, okay, and also we enjoyed a lot the, that moment of the concert. So it was like, okay, we have good vibes here. It feels like cool thing to do, we like it and we're happy about it, so let's try to, to keep on going. We were thinking about what we could do. So we start meeting in a cafeteria, taking some coffee, sharing ideas, uh, we can do this, not, I prefer doing other, other stuff. So uh, the first thing it was know what we should do, and the second it was the name, and that it was a difficult process. I have to admit, it was difficult to find the proper name. In the beginning it was, um, it was a little bit difficult because I was searching uh, for a proper house where to put the laboratory inside. Because as you put more and more and more herbs, there is no space for you no. <laughs> at some point and then. But uh, till I came here, uh, I had it exactly in my mind how I'm going to set it up. And it worked out. From my point of view, it was uh, really simple. Kalamata, five years ago, had a huge issue with drugs, uh, with uh, illegal dams. It still has. But generally, five years ago, we had really very important issues. And as a result, as an activist, uh, let's say, action, uh, we asked uh, for, the, in, for the municipality of Kalamata to let us uh, build and create five, uh, sorry, ten places of social composting um, uh, tanks, or to, to say it better, let us create five, uh, ten social composting tankers in order to put them in places of the city and learn the people how collectively uh, manage their organic waste for their own um, good. What we try to do in schools is to actually put the young people to think for themselves and to have this em empathic approach to different people. So it, we have this non-formal education approach, so we put them discussing different issues and try to always relate to their own experiences. And, and from that on we are not there just trying to like say this is the right thing, so we just like we're just helping facilitate the, the process for them to actually realize that they are being more or less prejudiced against this issue. So. It's an idea that was born as well with the fact that I was already involved with the tourism business, with the tourism industry, um, which is of course an industry that can um, make a lot of money, um, but can maybe that money doesn't always go to, to everyone, you know, to everyone that's special to everyone in the destination where tourists are coming. Um, so just by being part of this industry, I wanted to be part of it in the right way. So I had to find a solution and together with other people, um, I found maybe a solution, uh, maybe not for all the problems, of course not, but, uh, but it's, it's already something. It's already, um, it's already something to do, uh, tourism in a way that we can make profit with it. And with this profit, we're actually trying to put the money into the community in different ways. 
talking about the needs and the problems of the citizens of our neighbors and sometimes even our own problems sometimes because we talk about the problems in the journalism with some problems that we are having now laborals in some of the newspaper of the of the city i found the people that were interested in natural therapies and uh, with uh, and also for products that uh, are made of herbs and uh, also people started searching for me because they heard that there's somebody that does this job and um, you know asking um, how it uh, how to say this um, how all this stuff are made and uh, why it's better for somebody to choose something that's natural uh, they, they started being more and more uh, interested about it so I started having some uh, clients and also uh, some clients that uh, at some point and then were just my friends uh, right now we are located in uh, Sende, which is co-working, co-living space in Galicia, in northern Spain, right on the border with, with Portugal. This is one of, of our startups that I have started with my partner Maria last year. And basically we, we came in this village with 25 inhabitants, restored all old barn houses and converted everything into creative spaces. Uh, indoor and outdoor spaces uh, together with, with uh, various gardens where people from all over the world come here to build their beautiful startups or to work on their projects or to organize their, their events. We educate people in what is traditional and, uh, and uh, physical farming, what, which are the, the, process, the natural process of uh, growing food, what, which is a natural process of uh, eliminating our print in nature, what is a natural process of learning uh, our, our biodiversity, and which is a natural process of learning to use our biodiversity, our local biodiversity. So we do educational programs for schools, for groups of people regarding all these issues. Uh, we do um, production of uh, organic, mostly oranges and mandarins, because we mostly have of this set of trees here. But we also have organic um, traditional garden with uh, seasonal uh, goods, and of course we have a lot of wild plant, wild greens, rare, rare plants that needs are needs to be protected. At least we think that they need to be protected. That's why. We have created a big bank of seeds in our farm where people that are involved are interested into this process, the natural process, and they want to be a seed keeper. Uh, they come to us, they take for free small percentage of uh, seeds, seasonal seeds most of the time. They, we learn them, we, uh, we educate them how to uh, plant them, how to keep the seed while doing this process. And of course, they produce seed for themselves and they bring us also seed to us. Afterwards, uh, we had like three or four more concerts until February, and no, actually until January of this year. And then we, we wanted to, to, to keep on growing and we talked to a percussionist that we, we knew and asked him if he, he would like to join us, if he liked the, the style or, or, or anything. And... Um, he really liked the idea because it was something new for him and the idea of mixing our kind of soul style with pop and his roots of uh, Latin, uh, Latin rhythms because he's from Venezuela uh, it was like some, something really interesting so after that we started rehearsing uh, we had a couple of concerts more until June and in July we had a little tour in south of Spain. We went to, well, before we went to Lisbon, we had a concert there and then we played two times in Tarifa. So um, it was like a huge, uh, huge thing for us. Only in one year we were already in the south of Spain. So yeah, it was good experience. Uh, we are three, three persons now, but at the beginning we were more pers we were more people working in Farol 360. We started more, more persons this project. Some of them, they prefer or they decide to take the bag and leave the country. And others, they just took another way. 
All of them, they were support for Ferrol 360. Some of them, they had kind of a design interest, so they create the logo. Others, they have uh, informatic interest, so they develop the, the structure. So with some friends, uh, they were also in the technician part, they, they helped us, but it was personal, always, always persons, not uh, institutions, not organizations. We have this field of, of uh, making our own publications and creating our own media. We have uh, a study, uh, a collective study uh, activity as well. We meet every week to study, to read books, to discuss what's go going on around right now. Uh, and we have the perspective of using this to action, bringing this uh, knowledge and this uh, information that we want to spread inside the movements. Try to actually make more people in schools and as young as possible to address diversity. And especially not going to schools like for me to go, but actually to try to give tools to the people in the school, especially the, the students, to do it by themselves from the re really the beginning. We didn't have too much money, we didn't spend too much money. Actually, we have to say that the banks, they don't give you really too much money right now for get any, any project, so that it wasn't an option. So what we could do? Do it ourselves. So with the help of friends, family, reading a lot of books, reading blogs, YouTube videos, because everything is important, we develop for Roll360 everything. Logo, design, the structure, the sections, we did all by ourselves. So that it was difficult because we are journalists, we don't know about informatics, we don't know about the design and we have to learn and we have to ask for a lot of favors. <laughs> we have to say that we have uh, really help from, from the outside, we can say. Money, it's a challenge, it's a problem. But money can be surpassed <laughs> with help and with work. So that challenge was uh, surpassed easily enough, doing the right moves, right? Like uh, don't spend money on things you don't need, really. See what are your needs, how can you cover them without money, and friends is uh, mostly <laughs> what can cover them. For me, for many years, it was um, like just a thought and uh, how I'm going to work it out. But uh, from some point and then a friend of mine helped me and I started with some products and uh, it came bigger and bigger and bigger and it is like it is now. The biggest challenges that we, we had to face were getting in touch with all the promotion of a group. We had never done anything like that. We didn't know actually how to do it. It was completely new for us. So uh, getting the opportunity to play in some bars or, some, or in some locals, uh, it was just going to the owners, going there with our little demo with four songs and just ask them if they want it. So you also have to play it a little bit like, yeah, we have other offers or whatever. So you had to play it a little bit cool. So they will be a little bit more interested. And, but also you had to say that when we went to, to Tarifa, to the south of Spain, it was, it was also difficult the time, the three of us traveling like for one week in, in a van and having to face all the, yes, setting up everything, taking everything to the van again, trying to find, I don't know, it was like 24 hours together, so the, um, yeah, living together with these people, even though you really like them or appreciate them, it's, it's sometimes it's hard, but we, we managed it anyway, so, but yeah. If it's the first time you do something on your own, for yourself, with colleagues, with people you are not related by blood, but you are related by passions and ideas. What happens to you first is that you find yourself like uh, a newborn. You don't know anything. It's not something I've done before. I've never collaborated with others and have the whole, uh, everything depending on us know somebody to, that can tell us what to do, when to do it, how to do it. 
So I actually started understanding what it means to collaborate and, we, and I'm still learning it because uh, it's something that I was not used to do because it's different collaborate on a project and different collaborate on something that is your day, your life, 24 hours you think about something and you cannot think alone. But it was, it's a very, it's a process that gives you a lot of energy, mostly because when you lose something, you know somebody else from the group will have it for you. When you lose your passion, you lose your power, you lose your energy, you lose whatever happens to you, it will be given to you again from the group and uh, mostly understood why it's good to work all together. This work that we do to try to change the world, it, it's, it's, it works in both ways. We can either work collectively and that's how I've been doing and also individually. So just for me to live my life and the people that are around me and for me to talk to them about my life and who I am without hiding my identity. I think that's also um, making some changes, big changes around me. I answered some questions that I had. I answered some questions of how, how to do, how I think things can, can go forward and how we can eventually change, change some stuff, which is organizing. <laughs> Um, I understood that, for example, it's important to link movements not only on the regional level, on the, but also internationally, uh, on international level, uh, because we are facing a, a global problem. Um, I understood that I need to understand how society works if I want to change it, so I, I, I'm also part of a group that is worried with studying how things work uh, and the history of the movement. It's a fight the whole time, it's a struggle, but in the end there is a satisfaction. But the satisfaction is like this, you cannot uh, have satisfaction without struggling before. We put a lot of physical work in, into rebuilding the place and as I always say, a lot of physical work was uh, during uh, like uh, six months during the day and during the night uh, a lot of uh, creative thinking and, and building the, the whole strategy and then whole, whole, whole startup. Now after one year more than 500 persons came from more than 20 countries and a uh, few startups were born here and a lot of really creative people, entrepreneur minds came visited us and and uh, and keep coming back this experience completely changed my life because uh, I've been playing guitar for nine years more or less and I guess that for every uh, artist uh, there is some point that mostly when you play some instrument there is a point at least in my case that you really feel the necessity of creating your own stuff and to express yourself somehow not just playing covers that's cool i mean you have fun but in my case i needed to say something more so when i had this opportunity to create my own stuff and go to a concert and show people what i did and see also that they liked it um, that was that was a really i mean uh, a point in my life that changed my perspective and it's like okay maybe i can even try to make a living out of this. Maybe not this, with this group, maybe not with other, but at least creating music and really going, going for that. I must admit, it never liked me the idea of being my own boss. I know too many people like it, but not to me. Because when you are your own boss, you have a lot of problems in your mind. You cannot just close the door when you are leaving your job and that's it. And if something happens, it's not your problem. But when you are your own boss, when you try to develop a project, you try to get money, you try to everything get fine, that means a lot of problems. That means a lot of things in your head. So 
mm, I didn't like it, but I must admit that with the time I I start a few months ago or maybe one year ago to start to love it because you have the power you decide what you are going to do what you are not going to do let's say if you are working in a TV or on a newspaper you are just an employee they are going to say you you have to do this topic you have to go to this conference of press you have to do this stuff but when you are your own your own boss, you decide, you have the power, what is going to be in the home page of your newspaper. It's a difficult and really, really fancy and uh, a really happy thing, uh, being your own boss and have your own business, because uh, you set up your own program. Um, also, when you want to have some time out of this, most of the days you can do this. And, um, you can have all the um, inspiration you want so as to work it uh, in the best way you can. If somebody is thinking about doing something on his own, her own, absolutely do it. Be sure that is much more work than he or she thinks. <laughs> it has much more problems than he or he thinks, she or he thinks, but everything uh, you can overcome, everything you can surpass. And uh, to do so, you need persistence. That's the only thing you need is persistence. We tried a lot of things in this process that some of them went well, some not. And uh, among all of our passions, slowly we understood which of them we could apply and live from them and live for them in the same moment so that uh, this would not be a job but would be a way of living and make a living. Today we have our communities with a lot of problems so basically uh, someone who wants to solve a problem from a own community, can build a product which solves the problem. That product can give uh, enough money for this person, but at the same time you can you can help a lot of people just by, just by providing solutions, digital ones or, or not digital ones, doesn't doesn't matter. So it's the most important part is like uh, uh, think on something that you like, then make a product from it, product which solves some kind of problem and try to sell it. For somebody that uh, would like to be his own boss and to make um, his own stuff uh, and work with it, I would advise just to believe in yourself and um, everything um, will grow. Maybe slowly, maybe in a faster way, but uh, it will work out because if you truly believe in something and you love it, I think there is no way that it won't work. <laughs> you must love your job. If you don't love it, you are going to be tired because, believe me, it's going to take a lot of time. It's going to take you a lot of hours. So if you don't love it, you are not going to get it probably. So first of all, be passionate about your job. Choose something that really makes you happy, that it's kind of a hobby, we can say. Because if it's uh, something like a hobby, when you are doing something that you really like, time passed. If you really have a dream, you really want to, to create something, you really want to, to do something that makes you happy, and it's something maybe new, but it comes from, from your inside, you should go for it and don't really um, get disappointed at the beginning if something doesn't work, if you find some barriers in the way. Uh, because as I said before, I had m some other groups before and they didn't work at all. And it wasn't the people, maybe it was just not the right time, not the right style, not the right moment. So at some point you will, I think that always, eventually, you will find uh, a moment, the place, the people uh, to, to go for it and you will you will notice and feel the signs around it's like okay so maybe this is it and so I would say like just keep in mind what you want and never give up just go for it 
encourage anyone just to start experimenting and, and uh, on the things they like and this is uh, if you do what you like then then it stop being a job if you think that uh, making uh, another word is saying only about this and not acting about this it's a problem so you are the same with a lot of other people that in a way struggles the real to come up do not become um, kind of in cynical intellectual that uh, wants to think about reality but uh, doesn't uh, really believe it can change so we, we i'm part of a group that believes it can change i will keep putting my energy and i'll keep putting my time and my knowledge into things that i believe in and into things that i think can make uh, even if it's just a tiny difference uh, in other people's lives or in changing the world. Then. You find satisfaction in a small part. This is what keeps you go and go and go. I think the work that I'm, we are doing with the association, somehow it helps. And I know for sure that after like a session in a school, we have some, mom, some people that actually change their minds. And for me, that's really rewarding to know that that happened. I still want to change the world, um, but maybe I'm not so, um, how can I say, maybe I would be happy if I just change something else which is smaller, um, because now I know that if all of us do something smaller, um, maybe the world will change. So if we're crazy enough to believe um, that we can change the world, we're actually the ones that will change the world. I've known a man, just a simple kind one. I've known a love, just as big as the sky. Inside my lake I float and dream, inside his eyes become myself. Would you live inside, would you look and smile? When you found pain and darkness Would you live inside? Would you look and smile? When you found pain and darkness I've known a man, just a simple kind one I've known a love, just as big as the sky Inside my lake I